Okay, this sermon's entitled, Brought In by Satan. Brought In by Satan. I'd like to open up with prayer, and then with a few verses. All right, dear God, thank you for giving us your clear word. Thank you for allowing us to see what it says. Bless the listeners. I ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, <clears throat> the Bible makes it very clear that we're saved by grace. That was the Apostle Paul's message. And the Apostle Paul preached all over the place. And there were legalists all over, all over trying to infiltrate a poisonous, pernicious, you know, twisted um, m- malediction of a message into the church, trying to tell people they had to be circumcised, and they had to be under the law, and they had to, they had to live a certain way. And that's just what, basically what we have nowadays. It's, it's called work salvation. <clears throat> a work salvation can be anything from faith plus works, faith that produces works, or faith or if you're truly saved, God will do a work in your life and he'll transform you. And, and Or faith that, faith that perseveres, or you got to persevere to the end, or you can lose your salvation, or you can prove you never had it. Anything like that's work salvation. And anything like that, you're, you're totally lost if you're bought into any of that garbage. Because number one, whether it's God doing it or not, whether, you know, I've heard people say, well, if you're truly saved, God will make sure you persevere to the end. But if you really think you had to persevere to the end, doesn't that tell you... Doesn't that basically say that they haven't really trusted on Christ? A person who's truly saved knows that Jesus Christ already paid it all. He died for our sins. He was buried and rose again, and salvation is done. It's complete. And once you're saved, you're saved forever. And there's no repeating it, and there's no proving you never had it, and there's no losing it. <clears throat> so any, when, when a person thinks like this, with this works mindset, it's because they haven't trusted Christ at all to save them. And these, these would be you know, the people that Satan brings in. And it's not an arbitrary thing. It's not happenstance. It is something that Satan has directly appointed. He wants people to infiltrate churches to preach false doctrine, and that's how he deceives people. So let's turn over to 2 Peter chapter 2, and let's take a look at the first uh, few verses here. 2 Peter chapter 2, it says in verse 1, But there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false prophets among you. Now what he's telling us is that there are false prophets here, and they're gonna, there are going to be more false prophets other, in other places, in, during, in other time periods. And that's what we have today. We have false prophets. Who shall privily bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them, and bring upon themselves swift destruction. And many shall follow their pernicious ways, by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. Now, that's what a false prophet does. They, they speak against the, the way of truth. They speak against Bible doctrine. They speak against, you know, fa- salvation by grace through faith. They speak against once saved, always saved, and all these truths that the Bible teaches. And they always teach a work salvation every time. Okay, now let's keep reading. And through covetousness, they, excuse, excuse me, shall they with feigned words make merchandise of you, whose judgment now of a long time lingereth not, and their damnation slumbereth not. So it tells you that these people are unsaved and on their way to hell, like all the modern, you know, false prophets are as well. So now, let's turn back to 2 Corinthians chapter 11. We're going to find out that Satan is behind this. Some people will say stuff like, well, I don't believe these people are really lost. I don't believe they're really of the devil. I think they're just, they're just wrong. Yeah, they're wrong, all right. But that's what Satan does. He gets people that are dead wrong theologically, soteriologically, on the gospel. He, they're dead. They're dead wrong on salvation. He, that's what Satan uses. Yeah, of course they're wrong. But but that's what. But Satan's behind the fact that they're wrong. He wants them to be wrong so they can teach false. Second Corinthians chapter eleven says in verse thirteen, he's describing these people. You know, in verse twelve, then he says, "For such are false apostles." <clears throat> See, we've already read false prophet false apostles and we're going to we're going to see that anytime the word false is an adjective that precedes you know the noun who these people are then it's always of de- it's always of the devil because Jesus Christ is the true savior the word of god is the truth so whatever satan has has concocted it's always false it's always antithetical to the truth for such are false apostles deceitful workers transforming themselves into the apostles of christ and no marvel for satan himself is transformed into an angel of light so what he's saying is that satan transforms himself you know he deceived adam and eve he deceives everybody so if satan does that his ministers are going to do the same thing Okay, now look at verse 15. Therefore it is no great thing if his ministers, okay, they belong to Satan, okay, 
also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness whose end shall be according to their works. So what this is telling us is that if it's according to their works, they're a false brethren, they're a false prophet. So those that are saved, it's all according to grace. So th this, this tells you that, that Satan is behind this. He's brought these people in. So now let's turn over to Galatians chapter 2. We're going to look at a, f one, a couple you know, more verses on this. One final account of this. It says, okay, in, in verse 1, Then fourteen years after I went up again to Jerusalem, this is Paul, with Barnabas, and took Titus with me also, and I went up by revelation and communicated unto them that gospel, which I preach among the Gentiles, but privily to them which were of reputation, lest by any means I should run or had run in vain. So he's preaching the gospel, the, the correct gospel. Okay, now look at verse 3. But neither Titus, who was with me, being a Greek, was compelled to be circumcised. And circumcision represents the law, represents works. He's saying that the believers, you know, they were, they're not compelled to be circumcised. Verse 4 says, and that because of false brethren. There's another example of somebody that works for Satan. They're a false brethren. They're, they're not saved. If they were saved, they'd just be a brethren, a brother. You know, a child of God. But they're a false brethren. It says, unawares brought in who came in privily to spy out our, to spy out our, liberty, our liberty, which we have in Christ Jesus, that they might bring us into bondage. So what are these people brought in by Satan? What do they have in common? It's always a work salvation. It's always bondage. It's always the law. Number two, they're always false. Number three, it, they're always coming in sneakily, like you know, like a, like it's a clandestine operation or something. You know, the word privily coming in, you know, surreptitiously or furtively or covertly. They're always coming in, you know, pri you know, really privately, just kind of sneaking around, trying to get the false message out. That's what they, that's what they do. So that's how you know that they are from Satan. Is when they they come in really craftily, underhandedly. And <clears throat> their whole goal is just to basically deceive people. And, and let me tell you something. It's sometimes that they're going to be so sneaky that they're going to have a duplicitous message, a double-minded message, like or an ambiguous message. They're ambivalent. They have basically two things to say that are totally contrary, the one to the other. So watch out for that as well. It's not always it's not always going to be straightforward, you know, unambiguous work salvation false teaching. Sometimes it'll be a Saved by grace, but then it's really saved by works. So watch out for those. They're, they're the, those are the worst ones. They're the ones that'll say stuff like, "Well, we are saved by grace, but if you're truly saved, you'll have the good works." Now that that's a double message. No, here's here's what they should say: We're saved by grace, and if you're truly saved, it was by grace. And just leave the stupid works out. Now here's why I get so frustrated and so mad when people add works is because number one. Nobody knows how many works you have to do or what kind of works. And number two, everyone that talks about works, what kind of works are they actually doing? <clears throat> I don't see them doing any works. All I see them doing is perverting the gospel, preaching wrong, become, becoming anathema. That's all I see them doing. I don't see them doing good works. It's all hypocrisy. So watch out for the false brethren. Watch out for the false prophets. And watch out for the false apostles. They're brought in by Satan. And that's how, that's how we can identify who they are is because it's always going to be a sneaky, contrary message to the gospel of grace, salvation by grace through faith alone, or the simple message of John 3.16, or the simple message of Ephesians 2.8.9. It's always going to be something contrary. It's always going to be something where they add in works, or they add repentance, or they add in perseverance, or they add in something. So what we do about it is we just get rid of them, and then we just get back into the Bible, and then we then we just go by what it says. See, the Apostle Paul didn't put up with this. Turn back to Galatians chapter 2 real quick. I want to just look at a couple more verses. The Apostle Paul didn't put up with this garbage. He, he put a stop to it. <clears throat> okay, I stopped at verse uh, 4, but let's just keep reading, though. Okay, we're talking about bondage now. The, the false brethren are bringing in this bondage. To whom we gave place by subjection? No, not for an hour. He said, in other words, we didn't even listen to a whole sermon on this. We didn't even listen to the whole church service. We put a, we put a stop to it right away, okay. And why do they do that? So that the truth of the gospel might continue with you. So they didn't put up with it, and we don't have to put up with it either. So that's all I have. Dear God, thank you for giving us your your clear word. Thank you for allowing us to see what it says. Bless the listeners. I ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen.